Um, we're going to make some little shadow boxes. In stained glass, the, the whole joy of stained glass is the fact that it's transparent and light can come through. So if I hold this up to the light, I don't know if you can just see the little bits of colour coming through from the back and the tracing paper and this very spooky tree. It's a bit of a spooky landscape we're going to be doing. But it's the idea of transparency and this three-dimensional effect. So, we've got different materials here. We've got some acetate, some tracing paper, some tissue, uh, some black card, and you'll need your paint set up as well. You've got this sheet in your pack. Now, this is a whole lot of silhouettes. Now, a silhouette is a, a black outline, a bit black shadow almost of, of a shape. So sometimes they used to do silhouettes of people's faces um, in the years gone by, making them into tiny little brooches. But this one, we've got some nice creatures here that we might want to use in the foreground or the background of our shadow box. And we've also got this oval shape, which is going to be the shape for the front of the shadow box. At the very back of these shadow boxes, you'll see this very spooky tree. Now this is a bit like some of the painted techniques we use in stained glass. Quite often in glass, we've got some quite free paint work, sometimes scraped out and sometimes painted on. So this has been etched out a bit like the crayon technique that we're going to be using later on or you might have already done. Um, sometimes as well I like to blow the glass paint onto the glass and we're going to do a little technique like that for this spooky tree. So the first thing I'd like to do is take your sheet of tracing paper. Now I have cut the A4 sheet of tracing paper into four little rectangles. So that gives you four different chances of different trees. Now, if you can see my little piece here, I've put the tree not right at the edge of the paper. So I'm going to start the tree kind of here, just about there. First of all, we need to do is get our paint block. Now, this is a block of paint that you have in your pack and a paintbrush, and it's just sitting on a saucer. And we don't have fancy water pots, so a mug will be absolutely fine. So, I'm going to make quite a watery paint this time. Give it a wee going over. And I'm going to do just a big blob of paint down one side. Blob, 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 blob. Fantastic. And this is a technique I sometimes do use in my stained glass. And I have a straw. I'm going to squeeze one end of the straw so it's a bit flat like that and I'm going to start blowing. Now, can you see I'm creating some nice branches and stuff? Let's try some on the side. Oh, that was a good one. Wow, cool. Now it will crinkle up the paper, the tracing paper, and sometimes when this dries, it actually breaks off, but that's absolutely fine. I just love that kind of free painty effect. Let's do another one. Let's do some grass this time, as well as a tree. It's definitely a kind of Halloween spooky box. If you do it too dry, you'll find that it'll be difficult to blow the paint. So try and do a big line at the bottom as well. Oh, I love getting messy. Oh, that's a wee thing to think about. It curls up. So let's blow this first. Very 
There we go. Oh, that's just some other another side. I'm getting some fingerprints and stuff on it, but again, I don't really mind that. Yay! Oh, it looks quite nice. Nice effect. We'll leave that to dry as well. Okay, that's two. You can go on and do the four. That's obviously a thing to look out for, that this tracing people will, will curl up. So you might want to just stick it down to the table with a very little bit of cell tape or something like that if you want to do the grasses. Okay, while that is drying, we can get on with our side of the box. So we have a piece of black card. Now, sometimes we use it portrait and sometimes we use it landscape. And this time we're going to use it landscape. And what we're going to do is we are going to fold it lengthways in half. So I tend to make sure the two edges are lined up and then fold the crease back. Do that in the middle as well. Enjoy your little pieces. Excellent. Then we have to do some measuring. Oh, okay, it is 29.7. And if you have that, it's 14.8. But there is an easier way to do it. Just fold it in half and put a tiny wee crease. So you don't want it creased all the way down, just a little bit. And you can see where the middle is. And put a little bit of a mark there. Okay, now we are going to take the outside of our card and we are going to fold it in until it reaches that middle point and get the tower pole. And do the same on the other side. So we've got that. Then we're going to fold this bit back on itself. So until it matches up with that. So we've got a freestanding thing. Yay! Okay. Now we need this aperture, this hole cut in the middle from your sheet. There's this white shape here. Now if you can carefully with your scissors come in. What I tend to do is come in and just do it roughly first of all and that means I don't have all of this to bother about and put that at the side. Come in with my scissors. Now I'm left-handed so it might look a bit strange. When I'm cutting as well, I use just very, very little movements. You see? I'm doing this very slowly to get it nice and even. The slower and the more accurately you do all of these wee bits, the more professional and tidy and wonderful your finished piece will be. Do, 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 all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. Ta da! Okay, so this has to go in the middle of our shadow box. So I'm just positioning it by eye and then I'm going to take a pencil. Now use a pencil so that you don't have any lines on the front of your box. And I'm going to go round my template. If it takes maybe somebody to hold things for you, then you can maybe ask for a wee bit of help. 
because we're coming to another quite tricky bit. There we are, we've got our oval in the middle. Now we want to keep the outside whole so we can't cut into this. So we'll have to make a bit of a hole in the middle to start off. So I've got a rubber. Now this is really important. I've got a rubber and a pair of scissors. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that that rubber is right underneath my finger. And I'm going to take the scissors and just with one blade, I'm not holding the sharp bit of the scissors, I'm going to twist into the rubber to make a wee hole. Okay? Now that's a safe way of doing it. Don't try and stab it with your hand because it's too difficult with the two layers of card. Once you've got that, pop your scissors in and then you can start to cut out your oval shape. So I cut it so it's comfy and then go around again. Can you see I'm just making little movements with my hand and I'm using my other hand to turn the card at the same time. Take your time with this so you don't get scraggy edges. All the way round. All the way round. All the way round. Hey! It's a bit dodgy there. Yeah? It's because I'm left handed. Lovely. Okay, so our tracing paper is going to go at the back and at the front we've got this special film. Now it's called acetate and in your pack you should have a big piece of acetate. Now you might already have used something of this for another project but what we need is again I'm just going to cut it in half, just like we did with the tracing paper, and then half again, like that. I'm going to take my scissors. Be careful because this is quite um, jaggy stuff. Now this little sheet of film is going to make the front of our shadow box. So I can see that it's a little bit too high, so I'm just going to trim off the top there. Make sure that it fits inside. Ta -da! Lovely. I can still see the pencil mark where I drew around my template. So I'm just going to take a wee second to carefully rub out that pencil line. So it looks a bit neat. Okay, so at the foreground or the front of your picture, I've put in this one, I've put a cat and a little idea of some um, grass or something. Again, it's kind of silhouetted, so it's that kind of twilight time when everything, you can't quite see things and they're a wee bit of shadow. So I'm going to have a look at my sheet. Now you don't need to use these, you can make up your own um, little design, but I think I quite like this. Is it a magpie? Is it a crow? Maybe it's a crow. I think I'm going to use that. So. I'm going to, oh, that's the problem with acetate, it's clear, you can't see it. I'm going to put this in to my, I'm going to turn it flat onto the table, make sure it's poked right in, and I'm just with my pencil going to draw around the oval shape because that will let me see where Ah, can you see that? Yeah? Oh, you can see it in the shadow, that's lovely. You can see where your little um, workspace is. Um, right, where's that? Oh, here it is. Um, let's have this 
I know, let's have this bird sitting on a branch. So now we need these special overhead projector pens. Now these are permanent pens, so please be very careful. Um, they will come off your hands, but they won't come off clothes and they're very difficult to get off furniture. So please be careful with these. They also have a click as well. If you want to keep these nice, if you put the lid on, you should hear it click. Oh, this one's not clicking. But you should make sure that the lid's on because they do dry out really quickly. So I've got my little, put it in that way. I'm going to draw around the silhouette of my little bird. Do, do, do. Make his little feet. Crows are very, very clever. I had a friend who had a mag, not a magpie, a jackdo that had been pushed out of the nest and they had found as a tiny chick and they hand reared it and it was amazing creature. So very clever. Right, I've got the outline and with these pens sometimes they go quite grey so I would go over your silhouette a couple of times to make sure that it's nice and black. Right, I think I'm going to give him something to sit on. So maybe a bit of a branch. Bit, another bit of black on here. Use your imagination. If it was a rabbit, it might be sitting on a hillside, maybe with some other rabbits. If it was a seal, maybe under the sea with some nice seaweed. I can go over the edges just in case paper slips a wee bit. That's looking not too bad. Um, I might add a little bit of colour. I might add some more birds in the sky. Sometimes I like in stained glass to do these kind of lines that just give a bit of movement. Let's have a look. Put that in and see what it looks like. Oh, oh. Oh, back to front, that's fine. That's looking okay. Right, let's see if these trees are dry. I quite like this one with the big branch. Now, I could just stick that on at the back and make, make it that the only colour is the blue, but I think I'd like to put some colours in at the back. Now, can you see how this, oops, this paint is slightly cracking off. Just let it do that. It's fine. There we go. I think I might make it that kind of kind of sunsetty time. So maybe try some pink. Try some paper. Sometimes it's quite nice to rip the tracing paper because it gives you a nice edge, quite a nice edge. 
And I'm going to stick that on the back, like that, of my trace. Just a little bit of tape. When I'm working with tape, I never ever find the end. So I've come over the years to a bit of a sheet. What I do is I take some little bits of tape and I just put them around the top of a mug. And that means I've always got tape ready to use if I need it. I use this technique a lot. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape at the edge there and a little bit of tape at the edge there. Okay, I think it needs some colour down here. Let's try a bit of a blue or a purple. Oh, that would be nice. Maybe it's a bit of a, a hill. So remember, we're sticking it on the back of the tracing, on the of the tracing paper. Ooh, let's have a look. And then stained glass. Remember, I was talking about how it's all about the colours coming through. Ooh, that looks quite nice. Like that. Right. Obviously, this is too big at the top, so we're just going to take our scissors. Here for the trim. Trace the tissue paper. Pop. 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 Or we could actually, I might do this. I'm going to fold this tracing tissue paper up and it'll give us an extra shadow. A double bit of paper at the back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look, I haven't secured that so it's coming out. So let's do something about that. Let's put a tiny little bit of. These are very clever, these are bits of thing. Tiny bit of this edge just on the inside, not at the front, but just on the inside of our. Nobody will see. There we go, that's better. And we can stick that to the back, which I'm quite liking. Now, I put a little bit of a border and then I can put a tiny wee bit just to secure it for a minute. And then, a longer piece of tape to secure it properly. Do the same other side. Woo! I'm going to put the tape at first. And we'll put a piece of tape. So, a little bit of tape to start off with. Oh, sorry. And a big piece of tape to secure it. Fabulous. Oh, I like that. That's quite spooky. Mm. Just trim off any rough edges or wee bits of cell tape that stick out. Now, in your pack, you will also find a little tea light. And the idea is that this little tea light will go in at the back. Eliminate the piece now. It's very, very bright in here, obviously, with the camera lights. But what we're going to do is clear the table off and pre present some of these wee pieces so you can see them properly. Please, if you are doing this, only ever use the tea light that we've given you because it's battery operated. Don't ever use a flame with paper because that's really dangerous, it might go up. So, always use the little tea light that we gave you. So, we'll clear this set it up and let you see how it looks all atmospheric. Okay, well done.